Hello, math humans. We're going to do 8.4 today. We're going to be talking about the determinants of the square matrix. So our objectives are that we're going to calculate determinants using two different methods. One, for lack of a better term, I'm calling it Bain's method. It is a method that I originally learned how to do determinants with. And then we're going to learn how to do the official method, which uses minors and cofactors. So you will be responsible to know both, both methods. And I will ask you that on an assessment. So a 2 by 2 is considered a square matrix because it is a square and its dimensions are the same. So maybe I have A, B, C, and D. So just for review, the determinant <coughs> is equal to A times D minus C times B. Okay, and that would be the determinant. So if I want to find the determinant of a matrix, right, sometimes you'll see it written as the determinant of A, but oftentimes it's written as like an absolute value, although when we're talking about matrices, that does not mean absolute value. That means calculate the determinant of A. So you need to understand that that is not the absolute value of A, it is the determinant of A. So we're going to do an example from, um, sorry, with a 3 by 3. So it's another square matrix. It's just a bigger square matrix. And I'm going to write down that it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. And I'm going to put it in the determinant bars. Okay. Now this is a method that came from older textbooks. And it's really kind of a slick method. I think it's kind of fun. It's very nerdy. But it requires that you write over one less, two less, sorry, I'll just do it. So I'm going to write over A, B, D, E, G, and H. Notice that I didn't write over the last column. So now I'm going to do the product of these two three, notice there are three terms in each one, minus this one and this one and this one, okay? So this is the particular method. So the determinant is going to equal A, E, I plus B, F, G, that's funny, plus C, D, H, and then I'm going to subtract G, E, C, plus H, F, A, plus I, D, B, okay? So this is an older method of calculating a determinant. And so it's going to be the product of these diagonals minus the product of these diagonals. And you do have to remember that you have to distribute the negative. So let's do an example. Example number one is going to be find the determinant, okay? And my matrix A is going to be 0, 2, 1, 3, negative 1, 2, 4, 0, 1. So because it's a 3 by 3, I'm going to write over the first two columns. So this is going to be 0, 2, 3, negative 1, 4, and 0. And I like to draw the diagonals because I think I make less mistakes when I do that. So 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, my numbers aren't completely lined up, which is one of the reasons I like to draw my determinant. So the determinant is going to equal 0 times a negative 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 times 4 plus 1 times 3 times 0 minus 4 times a negative 1 times 1 plus 0 times 2 times 0 plus 1 times 3 times 2, okay? All right, so then every term that has a 0, I'm just going to draw a line through it because then that means I have less math to do. <clears throat> so 4 times 4 is 16, so this is going to equal 16 minus... This is a negative 4, 
and this is 6. So this is 16 minus 2, so this is 14. Okay. Now, on a, on a test, if I ask you to calculate the determinant, I'll tell you which method to use. I will also tell you whether or not you have to do it by hand or in your calculator. And just for purposes of showing you how to do that, let's go in and edit A and make it a 3 by 3. And let's enter that matrix that we just managed. So we had 0, 2, 1, 3, negative 1, 2, 4, 0, and 1. Okay. I'm going to check to make sure that I entered my numbers correctly. I think I did. I'm going to quit. Second matrix, I'm going to go to math. And notice that the first one says determinant. Uh, that's cool. And I'm going to do the determinant of A, enter. And notice the determinant of A is 14. So you can always check your work with your calculator. But on a test, I am going to ask you to do that particular process by hand. All right. I will tell you that sometimes this method doesn't work on a test. I know that it works because I will have already have done the math. But there are instances when that doesn't work, and mathematically, I cannot explain that to you. So I know that there's a good reason. I just don't know what it is. So now we're going to do the books method. And the book goes through a very tedious process of explaining all of the vocabulary. And so I'm going to simplify the vocabulary that the book uses. So this is going to be example number two. So we're just going to do it as we learn it. So A is going to equal, so it's the same matrix. So I'm going to have 0, 2, 1, 3, negative 1, 2, and then 4, 0, 1. Okay, so to find the determinant using the books method, you're going to choose a row to work with. Okay, so that's going to be the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to choose a row, and you particularly want a row that has a zero in it because it makes your life handy. Then the determinant is going to equal the element times a negative 1 raised to the row plus column times the determinant of the leftovers. And I'll explain this as we do it. And then it's going to be plus the element because there are three, in this particular case, an there are three elements in a row. And then it's going to be times the determinant of the leftovers. Okay, that's what LO stands for. And then it would be plus the element times a negative 1 raised to the row plus C. So this is the address times the leftovers. Okay, it's not LOL, just in case you're wondering, it's leftovers. All right, so now let's just do one. So I'm going to choose row 1, just because it's easy. So the, the determinant is going to be the first row, or the first element, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the first row and the first column. Okay, So I'm working with row 1, and I'm going to eliminate the first column. So my element is 0, Okay, and it's going to be negative 1 to its address, so it's to the 1 plus 1. The math that's left over when I eliminate the first row and the first column is going to be negative 1, 2, 0, 1. And I'm going to later calculate the determinant of that. Then I'm going to move to the first row and the second column. Okay, so that element is 2. Notice that's that point of intersection. His address is first row, second column. And the numbers that are left over are the 3, 2, 4, and 1, okay? And then I'm going to do the first row and the third column, okay? So that's going to be my element is 1, negative 1, first row, third column. And the numbers that are left over are 3, negative 1, 4, and 0, okay? Now, notice there's a 0 out front. So this term goes away completely, okay? 
So now I need to do this math. So here's the two. A negative one to the third is a negative one. And now I need to calculate the determinant, which is three times one minus four times two. And I'm not going to simplify this yet. Here's the one. A negative one to the fourth is a positive one. The determinant of this is three times zero minus four times a negative one, okay? So here's a negative two. The determinant is three minus eight, which is a negative five. Here's the one, and then three times zero is zero, positive four. And so this is 10 plus four, which is 14. And so notice that I got the same determinant that I did in the last problem, okay? <clears throat> All right, I know it seems a little confusing, but let's go and do another example, and I think it will get better, okay? So for example number three, and I'm going to do it in black so that you can see all of my colors. I want the determinant, and I know that A is negative 3, 4, 2, 6, 3, 1, 4, negative 7, negative 8, okay? And this one doesn't have any zeros, so just to show you the process, I'm going to use row 2, okay? I'm going to use row 2. So I'm going to do row 2, and then I'm going to do row 1, okay? So my determinant is going to equal my element, notice the point of intersection, 6, a negative 1 to his address, row 2, first column, and then the numbers that are left over when I eliminate are 4, 2, negative 7, negative 8, okay? The second one, I'm going to do row 2, second column. Notice that 3 is the point of intersection. And then I have a negative 1, second row, second column. The determinant, or sorry, the little matrix left over is negative 3, 2, 4, negative 8. Okay. And then the third one I'll do in purple is going to be the second row and the third column. Notice that the 1 is the point of intersection. Negative 1, he is the second row, third column. What's left over is negative 3, 4, 4, negative 7. Okay? So now I have some more math to do. Now you see why it's nice to have a row with a 0 in it because it eliminates one of my steps. So A is going to equal Here's the 6, a negative 1 to the 3rd is a negative 1. And then I need my determinant, so it's a negative 8 times 4 minus a negative 7 times 2, then plus. Here's the 3, a negative 1 to the 4 is a positive 1. Now the determinant, negative 3 times a negative 8 minus 4 times 2. Here's the 1, a negative 1 to the 5th is a negative 1 times, uh-oh, I'm going to run out of room, a negative 3 times a negative 7 minus 4 times 4, okay? And now I'm going to simplify a little bit more. So 6 times a negative 1 is a negative 6, and then this is a negative 32 plus 14, and then plus 3 times 24 minus 8, minus 1 times 21 minus 16. And it just gets a little bit tedious, but when you do all of that math, all of that arithmetic, you get 151. So the determinant is 151. When you do these problems, I recommend that you do them in colors because I think that helps a little bit. So we will go over these in class, and then we'll probably do some examples in class because I'm sure they're a little bit confusing, but they're actually kind of fun. That's it for today. I will see you soon.